start off today's video lesson with a problem. Without using a calculator, can you find the sum of the first 100 natural numbers? These are the numbers 1 through 100. And remember, they're all whole numbers. So basically, what is 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 100? Pause the video until you get an answer. Well, in the 1780s, the same question was asked by a provincial German schoolmaster who gave his class the tedious assignment of summing the first 100 integers. His aim was to keep the kids quiet for about half an hour, but one young student almost immediately produced an answer. 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 100 equals 5,050. His name was Karl Friedrich Gauss, and he would later join one of short list of candidates for greatest mathematician ever. Now, the question is, how did Gauss come up with 5050 so quickly? Before we get a little bit ahead of ourselves, let's first note that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 100, we call this a series. It's very similar to a sequence, but a sequence is separated by commas, whereas a series is separated by plus signs. Essentially we're saying take the sum of a sequence and we call that a series. These are specifically arithmetic sequences, series 2, excuse me, because each number is one more than the number before it. Let's see how Gauss came up with 5050 so quickly. First of all he was not a mathematical wizard. What he had was an idea. He said, if you fold the series of numbers in the middle, you could then add pairs of numbers together. So he would take 1 and then add it to 100, because 1 was the first number, but 100 was the last number. And then he would take 2 and add it to 99, and 3 and add it to 98. And if you notice, all of those pairs of numbers equal 101. So then he asked himself, well, how many pairs of these are there? And halfway between 1 and 100 is 50. So there are 50 pairs that all add to 101. So he simply said, what's 50 times 101? And he got 5,050. This folding technique has now been used in mathematics for hundreds of years. And we're going to see that we can come up with a formula to easily come up with the sum of an arithmetic series based on this folding technique that Gauss came up with. Here's an example similar to the one Gauss faced. Let's find the sum of the first 10 natural numbers, so add up 1 through 10. So if we use the folding technique, we're going to take 1 and add it to 10, 2 and add it to 9, 3 and add it to 8, and so on. And there's 5 different pairs, so 11 times 5 is 55. It's pretty easy now that you know the trick, right? Well, let's now come up with a mathematical way to algebraically say what we're saying when we mean fold the numbers in half, count the pairs, and then multiply that together. We're going to use the notation S subscript N. Just like how in sequence notation we use T subscript N to give us the nth term, well, S subscript N is going to tell us the sum of the first n numbers in this sequence. So Gauss's folding technique told us to take the first number in the sequence and add it to the last number. Then we're going to multiply that by the number of numbers in the sequence divided by 2. Remember, you're trying to figure, multiply it by how many pairs, or half of the total numbers in the sequence. So another way to write this is just the first number plus the last number divided by 2 and then multiply that by the number of terms in the series. If we use the notation we've used previously with sequences, well now we can simplify this even more to say that the sum of a series of n numbers is equal to n over 2 times a, which we use as the first number, plus tn, which is the last number in the sequence. Now what if we don't know what the last number in, a, in the series is? Well, we can adjust for that as well. If we don't know what the last number in the sequence is, 
we can just substitute for tn a plus n minus 1d, since we know that that's the formula we use to solve for the nth term in a sequence. So we're going to take our arithmetic series formula that we've already started with, sn equals n over 2 times, and now instead of writing tn, we're just going to write a plus n minus 1d. So our brackets look like a plus a plus n minus 1d. Now if we simplify all of that together, we end up with our second formula that we can use for the arithmetic series. Sn equals n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And we're therefore left with two different formulas we can use. One formula we'll use if we're given the last term, and the other formula we'll use if we aren't given the last term. Let's now see two different examples. So example one, find the sum of the first 30 terms of this arithmetic series. 5 plus 5.3 plus 5.6 plus, and then it continues. Well, we know that there are going to be 30 terms in this series, but we don't know what the last term is going to be. We aren't told. So we need to use the formula for the sum of an arithmetic series that doesn't use Tn. Or otherwise, it's Sn equals n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Now we know we're going to be adding the first 30 terms, so our n value will be 30. So we're going to say the sum of the first 30 numbers will equal 30 over 2 times 2 times a, where a is going to equal 5, because that's our first number in this series, plus 30 minus 1, n is 30, remember, times d. Now what's the common difference? Well, each number is going up by 0 0.3. Now we just throw all of this into our calculator. So 30 divided by 2 is 15, and we're going to multiply that times 2 times 5 is 10, and 29 times 0.3 is 8.7. So what's 15 times 18.7? Well, that's 280.5. So the sum of the first 30 terms in this sequence, or this series I should say, is 280.5. Now it's helpful to know that this formula will only work, and the other formula will only work, if it's an arithmetic series. If we have a geometric series or some other series altogether, then this formula does not work. Alright, let's check out one more example. <laughs> Find the sum of 5 plus 9 plus 13, and then all the way to 201. So again, we know that this is a series, and it's arithmetic because each number is going up by 4. So our a value here is equal to 5. Our uh, d value is equal to 4. But the problem is I don't know how many terms are in this sequence. I do know, though, that the last term in the sequence is 201. So tn is going to equal 201. So we could try to use the very first formula where Sn is equal to n over 2 times a plus tn. And I can fill in the a value and I can fill in the tn value. But I don't know n yet. So we need to find that first. So let's go back to our sequ arithmetic sequence formula, figure out n, and then once we know how many terms are in this series, we can plug n into this formula and solve. 
So we're going to need to do a little aside over here first. So first of all, let's write out that arithmetic sequence formula. It's always good to remember it. So a plus n minus 1 times d. And we'll fill in the things we know. So we know that the last term in the sequence is 201. We know that our first term in the sequence is 5. I don't know n. And I know that my common difference is 4. So 201 will equal 5 plus, and then 4 times n is 4n, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So I'm trying to isolate for n, so I'm going to take this 5, subtract 4 away, which leaves me with 1, and then move it over to the left, left side. Well, 201 subtract that 1 that's coming over will equal 200. So I'm going to get 200 equals 4n and then divide both sides by 4, and we're left with n is equal to 50. So there are going to be 50 numbers from 5 all the way to 201. Well, that's great. Now that we know n, we can now use our sum of a ser sum of an arithmetic series formula for 50. So let me uh, fix this up here. We know n now is 50, so we can say that s of uh, 50 is going to equal 50 over 2 times the first term is 5 plus the last term is 201. And so we end up with 25 times 206, which equals 5,150. So there you have it. If you have any questions on the sum of an arithmetic series, make sure you bring them to class. Look in, on your unit outline for your homework, and remember, the bold questions are the enrichment questions. Good luck. <laughs>